And welcome back YouTube, this is Booster Box Buster here with another anime figure review. Today's figure comes from the anime El Casador de la Bruja, and it's of Nadie 1A scale, made by the company Alter. This figure was a fantastic find off of Ami Ami for roughly 85 USD, which I think is a great deal considering that this figure goes for north of $100 on uh, most other secondhand uh, auction sites. It's always, I always suggest checking out Ami Ami's pre-owned section because they have some fantastic finds on there sometimes. Let's check out the box here. On one side here we have Nadia with her uh, poncho on, and on the other side we have Nadia without her poncho, window box. On the back we have a very simple uh, information. And on the top we have uh, more Nadia in a window box. Just a very simplistic box, nothing too fancy. Without further ado, let's get straight in to the figure review itself. And here she is, Nadia from El Cazador de la Bruja herself. This is such a fantastic figure. I absolutely love it. Uh, but before we get into re uh, reviewing the figure. Let's actually take a look at the absolute worst part of this, the base. It's just a pure white uh, display base. Nothing nothing special at all. It does have, comes with two peg holes to support the action movement of the character in mid-jump. And these, uh, these supports are a metallic color. Interesting choice. I figured they would have gone clear, but the metallic does give it that little extra support than a clear plastic one would give, so I do like that. As always, let's start with the shoes. In this case, these awesome cowgirl boots that she is wearing. On the side you can see very lovely tannish color that goes segues into a black on the side for the heel. And then it has these really lovely uh, imprints of like a horseshoe on the sides here. On the inside there too. Very, very cool. And then the boot on the for her left leg is very similar. No paint flaws, no defects for that. So that was an awesome, awesome look. Here we have her legs. Very nice. Uh, one issue that I do have with the legs here is on her left leg, you can kind of see a seam. Uh, let me see if I can find it for you guys. It's really hard, it's going to be really hard to see on camera, but there is a seam running right here where the mold uh, was at, so uh, that is an issue, but if you display her with her poncho, that really it covers it up, and I will just uh, show that to you later in the review. You can just kind of see the seam just kind of goes all the way around the figure's uh, left side here. But we do have a holster with a gun holster on the side, which is really, really cool. That wraps around her leg. Very nice uh, buckle. Show that extra detail. Here's the actual gun holster itself, and you, I believe you can actually place the gun inside the holster because I believe it goes all the way through. I did not test that, but it is hollowed out to where you can uh, actually put the gun in if you don't want her to be holding it in the action pose, which I think is a really cool move. She's sporting some uh, blue jean shorts there. Very iconic of the character. Almost reminds me of like a Revy type character. And then, of course, the holster belt that wraps around the back there for her extra ammo case or supply case. Very well done. And the belt buckle. She has a mid-drift right there. Very cute. And then it goes up to kind of like a tank top. Because this anime does take place in the desert, so this is realistic clothing that you'd be wearing. It's almost like a western-style anime, so... Uh, very, very cool. Takes place uh, in the Texas region and kind of works its way through Mexico and the uh, Central America area. So this is the type of clothing that you would wear. 
She has that red tank top, which I think is really, really lovely. No paint issues there. Wraps back around to the top there. And then her arms are actually really, really cute. I really, really like them. Long and slender. And that action, or the gloves, are well done as well. You can see it has those uh, opening the gloves there. And then the gun itself is actually detachable. That is an actual uh, piece that you can take off or put leave on there. I'm going to leave it on because uh, it just doesn't look right if she's not using her gun. The gun itself, it, it's... It's uh, it's passable. It's not nothing special, but it's uh, not bad. It's 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 an average style uh, anime figure gun, especially for the time that this was made. This is an older style figure, remember. And then of course, let's talk about the head and hair, which is and face, probably the most important part of an anime figure itself. All right, as you can see. The eyes are incredibly well painted. She has that uh, hair just kind of blowing in the wind in her face, right over that uh, her right eye, which I find super cute. She has that little bit of a smirk on her face. And of course, a well-done nose, which in anime figures don't tend to have uh, well-done noses, so that is nice to see for a change. She has her hair in a braid right here, which kind of goes all the way around, supported by her uh, right arm, and it goes into these two little loose supports. Her hair is full of life and movement, especially on the front here. It almost has that uh, video game protagonist, RPG protagonist type of hair, which I love. That little piece sticking out there, which is very easy to break off. And then, of course, the back of the hair, which is so well done. You have this little bit of, like, a necklace or hairband, which is really, really adorable. And then it goes into these little twisties on the edge of her hair there, which almost remind me of, like, a tornado. I don't know what to call that exactly, but it is just really, really cute. Really great attention to detail. The hair itself just looks like it's full of fluent motion. Just incredible. And of course, this is what she looks like without her poncho, and I'm going to show you not only what she looks like with her poncho on, but how to put the poncho on itself. Now, you do have to remove the headpiece. It does come off, so it's going to look a little bit scary for a minute. Alright, so it kind of comes over like this. That wraps around, and then it should snap right down. Alright. Pretty simple to place on and off. And then to place the head back on, you just simply line it up like that, and it should go on pretty easily. Sorry about that, just want to make sure it's on nice, well and supported. Yep, that's good. All right, and this is what the anime figure looks like with the cape on. It really hides up a lot of that uh, seam that is on the left side of her figure, except for right here, which is a little bit of a problem. But you got to remember, it is an older style figure, so some of these figures do have those issues. Her poncho is actually really well painted. It's just a simple white with the red tail tailing at the end. Really, really lovely. And honestly, I think it looks so much better with the poncho on, just because it gives it that action-fluent uh, motion that the poncho gives right here. Just such a lovely figure. Uh, I highly, highly recommend to pick this figure up, if you have not already. Uh, if you can find it, like I said, uh, for... $100 or less, definitely worth a purchase, If you, especially if you're a fan of El Cazador, or El Cazador de la Bruja. It is worth every penny. I, I give this figure 
9.5 out of 10, the highest score that I would probably ever give a figure. This is in Booster Box Buster, reviewing an El Cazador de la Bruja, Nadie, 1A scale figure by Alter. Signing out.